everybody! Today I am going to talk about the Iron Brigade, or the reason why Wisconsin was the coolest state in the Civil War. So a quick disclaimer, I have a heavy Wisconsin bias because it is my home state. Um, I don't live there anymore really, but I lived there longer than any place else in my life, so they are my people. And please excuse my intense excitement about being able to talk about Wisconsin. The Iron Brigade consisted of the 2nd, 6th, 7th, and 8th Wisconsin regiments, also the 19th Indiana Regiment, the 24th Michigan Re Regiment, and Battery B 4th U.S. Artillery. It was considered part of the Army of the Potomac. They fought in many major battles on the Eastern Theater of the Civil War, including Antietam, Chancellorsville, Gettysburg, Second Battle of Bull Run, and Appomattox. The Iron Brigade was one of the most feared units in the Civil War. The South was scared to death of them because of their tenacity and reckless courage on the battlefields. They earned their very infamous nickname during the Battle of South Mountain Pass in Maryland, in which they forced a significantly larger Confederate unit pretty much all the way back through the pass. This led Union General McClellan to declare that these men must be made of iron. One of the Iron Brigade's greatest military triumphs was during the Battle of Gettysburg, when the 6th Wisconsin was sent to Seminary Ridge to help a beleaguered New York regiment against the 2nd Mississippi, which was led by Joseph Davis, the nephew of Confederate President Jefferson Davis. They managed to wedge themselves between the 2nd Mississippi and the New York Regiment, it was the 147th New York, taking incredibly heavy fire. They managed to form into a V formation to split the 2nd Mississippi in half, like they had been trying to do to the 147th New York. It looked like it was going to be suicide for the 6th Wisconsin. They were being mowed down by the Confederate fire until Corporal Frank Waller and a small group of his men managed to fight their way to the second Mississippi banner carrier. They were able to wrest the banner from its carrier and throw it to the ground and then they proceeded to circle up around it and fend off anyone who tried to pick the Confederate banner up again. This move demoralized the second Mississippi so much that they started to surrender. <laughs> the Iron Brigade took the survivors of the second Mississippi as prisoners. It was the greatest number of prisoners taken that day. However, that kind of reckless courage didn't come without a very high price. Out of the 1,900 men that made up the Iron Brigade, 1,513 were killed at Gettysburg alone. Following the heavy losses at the Eastern Theater, the remainder of the Iron Brigade was sent to the Western Theater to help Sherman in his march to the sea. Many liberated slaves joined the Iron Brigade unofficially as servants or auxiliary soldiers as they made the push towards Atlanta. Once the call for freedmen soldiers went out in 1863, the Iron Brigade opened its ranks to the freedmen that were already there, making the Iron Brigade one of the only biracial regiments in the Civil War. There was also a very large number of very young boys serving as soldiers in the Iron Brigade. The youngest was William Distees. He was 13 years old when he enlisted and saw action in quite a few battles. Elisha Carpenter 
was just shy of 15 when he enlisted in the Iron Brigade. He was part of the 6th Wisconsin Regiment and was actually one of the men who helped Frank Waller fight his way to the banner during the, you know, during the Battle of Seminary Ridge. He and Isaac actually fought side by side in numerous battles throughout the Civil War. Just about every battle that Isaac fought in, the Iron Brigade fought in as well, which makes this whole thing really awkward. And these are only some of the reasons why I think that the Iron Brigade is the best brigade, in my personal opinion, and I hope that you guys enjoyed hearing about them as much as I enjoyed talking about them. If you have any other questions plea or topics, please feel free to leave them at the bottom of this installment, or on my blog, or on my Twitter, or on the YouTube page. And don't forget to give this installment a plus vote. Isaac and company definitely appreciate it, and so do I. And the recommended song for this installment is Heaven Knows by The Pretty Reckless. It is kind of the anthem of the gunslinger slash bastard centurion, which makes it ideal for Elijah and his brigade. And that's a wrap for today. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the vlog, and I hope you enjoy this next installment.